Hey Collider fans, John Roca here with an assist from the great Allison Keen of Collider.com to break down the new opening title sequence from the season premiere of Game of Thrones. After an almost two year wait for new episodes, Game of Thrones viewers were treated to a new opening sequence that narrowed its geographical scope. Instead of wandering all over Essos, we were just shown the Wall, Winterfell, and King's Landing. In between the now destroyed Wall and Winterfell though, there is an important location, Last Hearth, the seat of House Umber, where we see a visual representation of the White walkers moving in and as we saw in the premiere leaving a little something behind elastic the production company behind these fantastic titles explained to buzzfeed about the changes made to these iconic opening credits and what they mean one of the main changes in exploring fewer locations on the map they said is that for the first time we're able to go inside these locations we saw this in the winterfell section in particular as viewers were able to see the castle's great hall as well as the crypts elastic creative director angus wall explained you can go so much further and deeper with the tool set now than you could back when we did season one. The first seven seasons, there's an impressionistic aspect to the title sequence that I really like in an 8-bit way, in the same way that you would like Minecraft, but the new sequence is rendered with so much more accuracy and fractal detail. One of those changes also comes to the Astrolabe, which has shown key events from the story's lore, including the Doom of Valyria and the rise of House Baratheon. Now, the Astrolabe shows events like the Red Wedding and the birth of Danny's dragons, as well as the fall of the wall. A new location that appeared on the map in the premiere is one that is also very attached to the lore, and that's the aforementioned Last Hearth. Kirk Shintani, who was the art director for the season 8 credits, explains that if you look at the mountain that the Last Hearth is sitting on, it has that spiral shape that you've seen the White Walkers lay out bodies in spiral form, and you've seen the spiral shape reappear on the murals on the walls in the north. Quite a bit of foreshadowing to what we saw at the end of the season premiere, that's for sure. At least we didn't get the fire and the horror screams with it as well. Part of the visual upgrades for this season include an actual scale for these models. Adam B. Vary of BuzzFeed noted that the old credits never used a hard and fast scale for the model structures, but for season 8, Elastic used a virtual human as a reference for every single detail within its giant model of Westeros. Angus Wall also revealed that the wood grain is to scale. The metal is all to scale. Everything is rendered in a way that is much, much more accurate to a specific size. I'm sure that we will have detractors who will prefer the old look, but what we were going for was something that was less impressionistic. In the past, Elastic was not always given as much of a complete picture of the season's story, which explains the occasional oddities fans would see in the maps of the opening credits, like seeing Old Town long after Sam left, or not seeing Casterly Rock or High Garden even when they were major players in the season. In response to these oddities, Shintani did say that the places that I would have loved to put in the credits over the years are the places that have the most emotional resonance, not necessarily the places we spend the most time. If I had another shot at it to start over in season one and redo every single season over again, I would try to sneak some of those things in there. This time around, the team is being given a clearer picture. Not enough to include spoilers, but just enough to let them know what's important in terms of place and location. The interiors of each location are just as important now as the exteriors, which is an exciting change for us Game of Thrones fans. Shintani also cautions us about the opening credits, that there are differences in every single episode. From episode to episode, pay attention, because there's lots of hints scattered around around. Ugh, as if this series didn't require all of our attention already within the episode and previous opening credit sequences, now we are going to have to pay extra special attention to every episode's opening credit sequence this season. I don't know about you, but this excites my Game of Thrones loving heart. Okay, this is John Roca with help from Allison King saying that I hope you enjoyed this look at the new opening credit sequences for Game of Thrones. Let us know what you thought of the new opening credit sequences in the comments section below. And remember to like and share this video on your social media and to subscribe to this channel for more more Game of Thrones videos just like this.